Once upon a time, there lived a brother and sister named Hansel and Gretel. Their mother had passed away when they were babies. They lived with their dad in a hut in the forest. Their dad was trying to earn their living by working as a woodcutter and was looking after the kids at the same time. A couple of years passed and struggling to juggle work and two kids at the same time, their dad decided to get married again. The woodcutter's wife was from a wealthy family and she hated the fact that they were poor and she had to live in a small ruined hut deep into the forest. Plus, she did not like her stepchildren at all. On a cold winter night, as they were getting ready for bed, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother talking to their dad. How are you going to get through this winter? We don't have enough food. If you do not get rid of these kids, we will all starve to death. Their dad opposed furiously. No need to argue. I made up my mind. Tomorrow we'll take them to the woods and leave them there. Hearing all that, Gretel started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> her brother Hansel comforted her. Please don't worry, Gretel. Somehow we'll find our way back home. Later that night, Hansel snuck out and collected as many pebbles as he could in his pockets. In the morning, they all started to walk towards the forest. Their father told them that they were going for a family hike. As they were walking, without anyone noticing, Hansel dropped the pebbles to mark the way back. In the afternoon, their dad and stepmother lit a fire and told them that they will be back soon. They walked off and vanished in the woods. Of course, they did not come back. When the night fell, the horrible sounds of all the wild animals in the forest started to echo around them. Shivering with the horrifying sounds of the wolves, Hansel and Gretel did not leave the fireside until the moonrise. Then they started to follow the pebbles shining in the moonlight and walk towards home. Well done, Hansel. This was very clever of you. When the kids came back home, their dad was very happy and surprised at the same time. Their stepmother also acted as if she was happy, but deep inside, her decision was still the same. She was very upset that they were back. After three days, the stepmother tried to get rid of them again. This time at night, she locked Hansel and Gretel's door and did not allow Hansel to collect pebbles again. But Hansel was a clever boy. When they were walking to the forest in the morning, this time he dropped the breadcrumbs that he had put in his pocket the night before and again made a trail all the way back home. Around noon, their father and stepmother made up an excuse and went off, leaving them all alone in the forest again. Realising that they were not coming back, Hansel and Gretel wanted to start walking back home before it got dark. But this time, they could not find the trail they left, because all the breadcrumbs were eaten by the birds. Gretel started crying. For the first time, Hansel also felt hopeless. This time the kids were really lost. With no food and scared to death, they wandered around the forest for three days. On the third day, they saw a bird, white as snow. The bird chirped songs with its beautiful voice for them. They forgot their hunger for a moment and started to follow the bird. The bird brought them in front of a funny looking house. This house had walls of bread, a roof made out of cake 
and windows of candy and was covered with colourful cream all around. Hansel and Gretel could not believe their eyes. The house looked incredibly delicious. The kids forgot all about how tired they were and started to run to the house. Just as they were both going to have a bite from the house, they heard a voice from inside. Oh! Now who is nibbling on my house? They looked around and they saw a cute and sweet old lady at the door. When they told her all about what had happened to them, she felt very bad for them and so she let them in. The inside of the house was very different from the outside. It was dark, scary and it didn't feel right. But because they were so tired and hungry, the kids did not care much. The old lady brought all kinds of food and desserts for them and the kids ate food that they hadn't had before. That night, they slept on the softest bed they had ever seen. When they woke up in the morning, the old lady wasn't there. They started to look around. At the end of the corridor, they saw a small door. When they opened the door, they found cases full of gold and treasure inside. They were very surprised, of course. Hansel wanted to get in and take a closer look. Right at that moment, they heard her voice again. And what do you think you are doing? When they turned around, the kids faced the witch standing right there in front of them. Apparently, the old lady was a witch leading the kids to a dungeon with a house covered with cake and candy. The kids tried to run away but the door was locked. The witch pulled Hansel by the hair and locked him in a cage. Then she dragged Gretel to the kitchen. Your brother is too skinny. Cook some food for him and make him fat. When he's in good shape, he'll be a delicious meal for me. But don't you dare eat anything. All the food is only for him. Having no choice, Gretel did what she asked for. Fortunately, Hansel was a clever and wise boy. He decided to trick the evil-hearted witch. Every night when the witch was asleep, he was digging a hole in the ground of the cage. The witch was controlling Hansel every morning to see if he gained weight or not. But Hansel wasn't eating anything his sister cooked. Instead, he was burying them in the hole that he digged. In the meantime, the witch was telling Gretel to cook more. This went on for days until finally the witch had enough. Fat skinny! I don't care anymore! Today I will make Hansel pie! She turned to Gretel. Look in the oven to see if the dough is baked enough. Although she was in fear, Gretel was also a wise girl just like her brother. She understood that the witch was going to push her in the oven. I can't get my head in there and see the dough whined Gretel. The witch pushed her aside and stuck her head inside. Gretel gathered all her strength and pushed the old witch into the oven and closed the oven door. <coughs> Gretel knew where the witch was hiding the keys. She ran straight away and saved Hansel from the cage. The flames from the oven covered the whole house. Hansel and Gretel ran away from the burning house into the woods. But they did not know where to go. A while later, they came across a river. A giant swan took them one by one to the other side of the river. The kids looked around and suddenly they realised where they were. They ran home as fast as they could. Seeing his kids 
father was full of joy. With tears of joy, he explained to them how their stepmother had gone back to her parents' house soon after they had left them in the forest. And how sorry he was for all that he did, and no matter how hard he had searched for them, they were nowhere to be found. The kids loved their father very much, so they forgave him. But another surprise was waiting for their father. They both reached their pockets and brought out gold and diamonds they had found in the witch's home. Their father could not believe his eyes. All the problems that their family had ever had went away and they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a land on the east, there lived a poor but very good-hearted boy named Aladdin. Living with his mother, Aladdin did the hardest jobs, went the furthest distances, just to earn their living. One day, he was going far away to get some bananas to sell in the market. Suddenly, he came across a well-dressed man with a beard and a dark look. The man talked, showing the gold in his hands. Hello, my boy. I'm an old friend of your father's. Would you like to win a gold coin? A gold coin? If I pick bananas for the rest of my life, I still wouldn't earn that much money. The man asked Aladdin to go down the hole, under the rock, a little further away, and asked him to do as he said. Aladdin thought that this was a very easy task. Together, they pushed the rock further away and watched as the hole appeared. Being as tiny and as agile as he was, he managed to go through the hole. Inside, he found a very narrow staircase and down he went. When he made it to the bottom, he saw that the cave was lightened up with an old lamp. He couldn't believe his eyes. Inside the cave were precious stones, gold, and was full of treasure. While still at shock, Aladdin got scared from the voice he heard from up above. Lamp! Have you seen the lamp? Turn the light out and just bring the lamp to me. Out of all that treasure and gold that was lying there, Aladdin couldn't believe that the only thing that the man had wanted was his old worthless lamp. Now... Aladdin was scared. Aladdin took the lamp and began climbing up the staircase. But before he did anything, the man started to yell. Give me that lamp, quickly! Aladdin couldn't understand the man's behavior. First, I want to get out of here. If you don't give me the lamp, this instant I will lock you up in this cave forever. At that point, Aladdin knew that this man was up to no good. No, first I want to get out of here. All right then, you asked for it. Hey, stop! What are you doing? Unaware of dropping his ring in the cave, the man pushed the rock back on the hole and left Aladdin there. Aladdin saw the ring on the floor. And as soon as he picked it up and put it on, with a tremendous noise, the cave lit up in a pink cloud and from the cloud appeared what seemed to be a giant. In fear, Aladdin took a look at the giant. Wish for anything you want, but don't you forget, you only have three wishes. I wish to go home. Okay, my boy. With a glimpse, Aladdin was back at home. <coughs> Seeing her son appearing from nowhere, Aladdin's mum began to scream. Aladdin explained to his mother all that had happened. He told her that he wasn't able to get the gold, but instead was left with this old lamp. Wanting to clean the lamp, Aladdin began to rub it. Suddenly, the fumes coming out of the lamp covered the whole room and a genie appeared from nowhere. Wow, 
oh man, I've been trapped in this land for hundreds of years, and you saved me! Well, wish for anything you want! Stunned and frozen, Aladdin and his mother kept staring at the genie. The genie repeated what he said. Wish for anything you want. Well, in that case, prepare us a table full of delicious food and drinks. All of a sudden, a feast table appeared in the middle of the room, with all kinds of food, fruits and sweets. From that day on, thanks to the magic lamp, anything Aladdin and his mother wished for came true. They were living a rich and happy life. A long time passed by. One day, when passing through the market, Aladdin saw Princess Jasmine, the king's daughter, on a silver throne carried by the soldiers. And he fell in love with her. He went home and told about it to his mum. And his mum prepared a chest full of gold with the genie's help and went to the castle. She told the guards that she had brought a present to the Sultan. Liking the present very much, the Sultan called her to his presence. When she told him about her son's intentions, the Sultan asked her to prove her son's wealth and power. If your son wants to marry my daughter, tell him to send me 40 slaves, each carrying a chest full of precious stones, and they should be followed by 40 soldiers to protect them. Hearing the Sultan's wish, Aladdin's mother turned back home sad, because she thought that even the genie would not be able to grant a wish this big. Aladdin picked up the lamp and rubbed it harder than ever, and the genie came out. Well, wish for anything you want. Aladdin told him about the Sultan's wishes. The genie clapped three times, and suddenly right beside them appeared 40 slaves with chests full of treasure and 40 soldiers protecting them. The next day, seeing that all he had wished for was right there in front of his eyes, the Sultan was very impressed. He wondered how rich Aladdin was. I want my daughter to live in a big and fancy castle. That is the only way I will let my daughter marry you. Aladdin told the Sultan's wish to the genie. Genie granted his wish right away. Aladdin could not believe his eyes. A gorgeous, fancy castle was standing right next to their home. He couldn't believe his eyes. Sultan thought that he could not find a richer husband than Aladdin. Aladdin and Princess Jasmine had a huge wedding that went on for three days. Everybody heard about Aladdin's luck and wealth. But Aladdin and his mother did not say anything about the genie to Jasmine. One day, a salesman came next to Aladdin's castle. Old lambs! Old lambs! I buy and sell old lambs! I buy anything that's old! Jasmine heard the salesman yelling and thought that if she would exchange the old lamp with a new one, it would make Aladdin very happy. She gave the salesman the magic lamp and got a new one. The salesman was actually the evil man who trapped Aladdin in the hole where it all started. When he got a hold of the lamp, he immediately ordered the genie to move the castle far away with Jasmine in it. When Aladdin returned home that evening, the castle was nowhere to be seen. He knew something very bad had happened. Their old house next to the castle was still standing. 
He ran home right away and found the ring he found in the cave. As soon as he put it on his finger, the giant appeared once again. Wish for anything you want, but don't forget, you only have two wishes left. Take me next to Jasmine right away. As soon as he finished his talking, he found himself in the castle. He hid immediately. His wife Jasmine was serving the evil man. He was holding the lamp in his hands. When no one could see him, Aladdin put the ring back on and the giant appeared again. Wish for anything you want, but don't forget, you only have one wish left. Let that evil man go in a very long and deep sleep. As soon as he finished his words, he ran next to his wife. Jasmine was looking at the evil man in fear. When she saw Aladdin, she got very happy. Aladdin told Jasmine all that had happened from the beginning. Jasmine listened to him with amazement. Aladdin rubbed the lamp again. The genie appeared. Well, wish for anything you want. Send the civil man so far away that he can never ever find us again. The sleeping man suddenly vanished. Aladdin asked the genie to carry the castle to its old spot. Take us and the castle home. The castle flew in the sky and landed back where it was before. With the castle back in its old place, Aladdin was finally next to his mother again. Aladdin, his mother and the princess lived happily ever after.